Appropriation art. To appropriate means to borrow, recycle, or copy an image for the purpose of a new creation. Appropriation has always been a part of visual culture. Artists have a long history of borrowing and copying from what came before. However, appropriation is recognized as a postmodern art movement in which artists incorporated images or concepts from a historical, commercial, cultural, or other precedent into their own work, almost always without the permission of the original creator. This does not mean the artists are plagiarizing. An appropriation artist often wants you to recognize the image being appropriated. Consider the work you are looking at. A panel of appropriated Mona Lisas by Paul Giovannopoulos. It's from 2004, acrylic on canvas, two panels each, 38 by 56, called Mona Lisa A and Mona Lisa B. Ah, the Mona Lisa. Marcel Duchamp, one of the leading appropriation artists of the early 20th century, famously appropriated the original in this work from 1919. He took Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa from 1656, penciled in a mustache and beard, and appended the title. The name, El H O O Q, is actually a pun to represent a French sentence, which can be translated loosely as, she has a hot ass. Marcel Duchamp is most famous for another scandalous work. It consisted of a porcelain urinal repositioned with R. Mutt scrolled on it and called the fountain. The work is regarded by many art historians and theorists as a major landmark in 20th century art. The piece was submitted and subsequently rejected by the Society of Independent Artists in 1917. Marcel Duchamp resigned from the board in protest. Duchamp, by taking a utilitarian object and reframing it to give it new conceptual and artistic context, permanently severed the link between the value of art and the labor of the artist. Look closely and observe the flowing lines and curves of this urinal. Behold, the fountain, which many consider the most influential work of the 20th century. Pablo Picasso also used appropriation. Consider this work from Las Meninas, a series of 56 paintings from 1957 in which Picasso has twisted, distorted, and dissected the famous painting by the same name. Now let's look at the original from 1656. Las Meninas, meaning the Maids of Honor, was originally painted by Diego Velazquez, one of the most celebrated artists of the Spanish Golden Age. Let's take a closer look at both works side by side. One final example of Picasso's use of appropriation is his brilliant reinvention of the famous painting Luncheon on the Grass by Edward Manet from 1862 and 1863. Behold Edward Manet's original and Pablo Picasso's brilliant appropriation of it from 1962. Just looking at it calls to mind Picasso's famous quote, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Despite the important history of appropriation in art, it has been an artistic practice that has resulted in the contention of copyright issues. Andy Warhol, who is a no, who's known as a leading figure in the pop art movement, is famous for his silk screen images, like this one of Marilyn Monroe from 1967. However, Andy Warhol has faced a series of lawsuits from photographers whose work he had silk screened. When he hung his silk screen reinvention of photographer Paula Caulfield's flowers photos on the walls of a New York art gallery in 1964, Caulfield noticed and threatened legal action. Andy Warhol settled out of court and agreed to pay Caulfield future royalties and gifted her two of the paintings. On the other hand, Andy Warhol's 1962 series of Campbell's soup cans never faced any threat of legal action, simply because, unlike photographs and paintings, soup cans and paintings are not competing products. In this series, Warhol silkscreened 32 Campbell's soup cans in an effort that asks the question, 
Why can't a tin can of food found in millions of American homes be considered a work of art? Today, appropriation artists continue to challenge our ideas of originality and of what does and what does not constitute art.